Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Violet Plays Dire Wolf 20. Today we are working on bees. Uh, I have this set up. I actually recorded an entire episode of me setting this up and the video was off and so I'm not posting it so it wasn't that exciting anyway because I didn't know what I was doing. Then again that sounds like most of my videos so there you have it. Anyway, we have here a squeezer that is currently squeezing seeds to get some nice seed oil. And then over here we have a carpenter which was busy making impregnated sticks and the impregnated casing. To make an impregnated casing, there's the stick recipe right there. It's just two logs on top of each other. And then that's just a, like an image that you put in to show what recipe you want. And then you put the blocks that are actually going to be used in here. You'll see this, this one going down as the sticks are being created. To make an impregnated casing, you again need seed oil, and then you just do like so, and there you go. You have a casing. I don't know if that's enough seed oil for it. It may or may not be. But that is how you make it. Very easy to do. The biggest part is actually getting the seed oil. The wheat seeds do not give you a lot of oil at all. You take lots and lots and lots and lots of seeds. Uh, you get a little bit of a better deal. I think there's an aura node right there, right around my crosshair. Let's actually go check that out real quick, just out of curiosity. Hello, yeah, oh yeah, you're an ore node, all right. There's one inside the nexus, too. Um, or in in the new part of the nexus that I'm building. Um, anyway, as we get distracted by the shiny, so yeah, so the seed oil, the wheat seeds, actually is probably one of the worst, if not actually the worst way to get seed oil. It does not produce a lot at all. Uh, in the forestry mod, you can actually use the bees to then breed different types of trees, and those trees will sometimes create uh, different types of nuts and like walnuts. You can get walnut trees and that sort of thing. And those are excellent for seed oil. You get so much seed oil from those. Uh, but you, again, you have to use the bees to get to the... You have to have the bees pollinate the trees to get the trees to breed. It's a whole big thing. Uh, but once you get there, it's a lot of fun. Oh, we did have enough to do a couple of impregnated casings. Excellent. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and just grab this stuff because I'm going to use it for the bees. Let's turn this off. I had um, this... Okay, let's get over here. Turn off. Okay, this is a combustion engine that runs on fuel. Uh, this is the water pipeline I just hooked up to this setup over here. This is ugly. This is only temporary. This is not meant to be here permanently, so it is ugly. I don't care. Um, there's an aqueous accumulator there. We've got, I just ran a pipe through it, a liquiduct, or fluid duct, excuse me. I think they call it fluid ducts now. Uh, hooked it up over there, and then we have the build craft energy set up here to run these two machines and it ran the refinery which I ran this on oil a couple of buckets of oil filled this up and then just let everything filter through the reason why we had to do this setup uh, is because these forestry machines run on MJ and over here these dynamos produce RF there are different types of power in various mods of Minecraft and sometimes the mod packs when they all come together they don't always run on the same type of power just something to kind of keep in mind so I don't know what the RF stands for I forget MJ is Minecraft jewels and then there's a third type called uh, EU I don't remember what that stands for either uh, but EU MJ and RF are all different types of power creation energy sources um, kind of like very various forms of electricity so to speak uh, and sometimes they cooperate and sometimes they do not apparently with the forestry machines they do not you have to have the MJ so I had to have the combustion energy from Buildcraft um, or the combustion engine from Buildcraft in order to activate and run these machines so that that's explains this setup and of course you know if you're using Buildcraft might as use might as well use the Buildcraft energy I think I tried I think I tried the leadstone energy cell. I don't think it worked. I can't really remember. It doesn't really matter. Those things are all easy to create. So yeah. Okay. So the purpose of my creating uh, these bee stuff away from the cherry blossom base because originally we were going to just start them in the cherry blossom base and then build another Mistcraft world for it. Um, the reason why is because these particular bees which I stuck somewhere, aha, are the oblivion bees that we found in our quarry. I don't know if you remember that episode, but we did find these at the very bottom of the quarry. Uh, the quarry apparently managed to mine out a couple 
uh, another hive because we got an, another princess and another drone. Uh, but when you break the hive and get the goodies, uh, specifically the forgotten comb here, we get ender pearls, which tells me that there's a really good chance that these oblivion bees, one of the side products, is an ender pearl. And that is what I'm hoping because I want to create tesseracts. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to create tesseracts for use in the uh, nexus. Uh, I want to create a bunch of iron tanks and just fill them with all sorts of things like fuel and lava and honey and seed oil and just huge, massive iron tanks just full of all this stuff. Uh, this is what I'm building here. I think that, again, that was in the last episode that is lost. Um, I'm building another section. There's the ore node I was talking about right there. Uh, it's going to be interesting dealing with these because I don't want to break them. You can walk through them, so I guess it's not such an issue. Can you walk through them? I can't tell. I can't tell from... Yeah, okay. I'm going through them. So it's not that big of a deal, but I'm going to build this up eventually, and then I'm going to have another. This is kind of an oval shape. I can actually show you. Might as well. I can't remember if I showed this or if that was in the last episode. So if I'm repeating myself, I apologize. Uh, but it's just kind of an oval shape. And I'm going to have another oval shape that intersects with it and goes here, kind of like this area. And then I'll have probably some sort of dome over here uh, in this clearing area and kind of utilize the natural landscape here because uh, I think that's kind of cool. And then these, this will eventually be connected to this as well. We'll just have like a little mini hall or something, not anything too fancy. It might be open, it might not. Um, we'll build this and then the next part and, and decide from there. Uh, but this is the intention of being the whole nexus. And we'll have somewhere in here, probably below, we'll put just a bunch of tanks. Uh, and in order to make it easier to access the tanks and to remove and use the liquids to add the liquids and to remove the liquids so we don't have to do everything right around in this area I actually want to use da -da -da, ender tanks right here and in order to use the ender tanks you of course need ender pearls and I have enough for a couple of these and you need two each specifically for one at the source where you're creating whatever liquid and then another at the lava tank where you want to add any liquid and then of course if you want to use the liquid in the tank, you have to have another pair so you can remove from and use and have it sorted elsewhere. It's kind of like an ender chest where liquid will appear in one place and disappear in the other place. And you don't really need pipes. You need a pipe to connect to and from, and that's it. It's, it's very helpful. It's very easy. I'll show you when we get to that part. I'll actually show it on camera so you can see. Um, but I need lots of ender pearls for all of that. And I do not have any. I have these two. <laughs> so I thought if we can get these oblivion bees going uh, and have them running and get them nice and happy so they produce lots of comb and then hopefully when we spin the comb, which is actually something else I want to do is do a centrifuge, um, we should get a, a, a steady source of enderpearls. That is the hope. That is the dream. We are living the dream. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of the stuff in my inventory. I was playing with ideas for the Nexus. Let's see, ah, uh, no, I want that there. I kind of organized these a little bit. It's not perfect, so I'm just gonna kinda, okay. All right, that's good enough. Uh, I did a little bit of extra work in here, as you may have noticed. I quite like it, personally. Uh, it is, uh, I added the aluminum brass over here. Let's actually get a little, a little bit. Uh, the aluminum brass outline just for a little bit of extra bling and then of course these little tables which will hold um, the different locations and the different worlds at least for now so we've got several of those tables there that we can put books um, I added this stuff here which I actually really like it's a type of glass edged glass post it's this stuff edged glass this guy it's edged glass from extra utilities uh, it's just thickened glass like that. Thickened glass is just sandy glass, which is like this. Uh, it's several steps. You don't get a ton for what what it is. The output's really one one to one. Not at that step, but at this step, it's one to one. So you have to use two pieces of glass to get one of these, and then you only get one one piece of glass. So yeah, you you basically half however much however many pieces of glass you're putting into the recipe, you basically half it to get the thickened glass. But then you get an eight to eight for the edged glass. But I really liked the way it looked as a post, that kind of Art Deco-ish 
kind of, I don't know, I like that. So added that just because w once we added the aluminum brass, this part just kind of looked boring. I considered putting along here too on each of these ends, but I kind of like having it a little off center and not perfectly symmetrical. So that's, that's the way that is. Uh, and then I added some coal covers here and some strips here again just for a little detailing the the uh, thing here the roof the roof is on fire now the roof looked a little boring to me so hence the let's see if I can get yeah so I added just that little bit of detail I think it looks okay anyway I might play around with it I'm looking for things to do for the floor pictures for the floor uh, so I can get rid of the torches is what I was looking at I was looking at inverted gray lights. Let me see if I can show you. Is it a light or lamp? I think it's lamp. Lamp. This guy. The inverted, not this guy. The inverted gray lamp. I thought about making it stand out, but now I'm thinking about making it blend in, but I'm going to play with that off camera. We are going to work on the centrifuge today. So centrifuge is copper and a sturdy casing with some glass. I actually had a sturdy casing made up. I believe I showed that on camera, so I'm not going to show it again. Uh, and we need some glass, which I can't remember where I stuck. I tried to organize. Like I said, it wasn't, it's still kind of a work in progress. And some copper. We're going to need more copper than that. That should be enough. And then we can move over here. Break this down. And one here, one here. Put this and like so. We should get a centrifuge. Centrifuge! Excellent. Okay. Come back over here. Put all my stuff up because I don't need any of this stuff anymore. Let's actually put that with that. Okay. Now we need to make a couple of apiaries for our little guys. Uh, to make an apiary you need an impregnated casing and you don't need to make any of this. Here it is right here. Uh, it's just slabs surrounded by planks. Very easy recipe. The hardest part, I don't know what this is with the woodworker. This is a new thing to me. We'll play with that later. Um, the hardest part of that is actually getting the impregnated casing because of the seed oil. And it's not particularly difficult, it's just kind of a pain. Uh, so we're going to need two of these, so it's going to be perfectly. However, oh, it's going to work out perfectly. Not so much in that we're losing the slabs, but yeah, there we go. Wait, no, no, no. We're using the slabs. Works out perfectly that way. I didn't have enough planks, so that's why it was not perfect. Finish your sentences, Ryla. Your thoughts are important. You must finish. Well, they're only important if you finish them. Okay, so let's see what biome we're in, because that's going to play a part. The biome we're in is the Badlands. I'm betting it's going to be hot and dry here. The only way I know to tell is actually to attempt to place in bees. The bees will tell us what they need, and you can't see a thing. Let's get rid of that. There you go. All right, now it says no queen. It tells you it's hot and it's arid, which is basically hot and dry. Uh, and no power is required, which is excellent. I don't know what kind of atmosphere these bees need. I don't have a bee elizer yet. So let's see. Hostile environment. They do not like this, which is not a surprise. Different bees belong in different biomes, and they don't necessarily tell you what biome they want unless you're able to analyze them. The way you analyze them is you actually need to have honey drops. So to get honey drops we are going to need to centrifuge some combs we have these combs here I don't think we're gonna get a lot of honey drops if any out of this but we're gonna give it a shot turn that back on get it running and you can see the centrifuge going and we'll see what kind of product we get from these little combs uh, we should hopefully get honey and then some other side product would be ideal preferably an enderpearl because that's the whole reason why we're doing this and we just get a honey drop. But that is okay. That is enough to do exactly what we need to do. So now we need to make a bealizer. Go back over here. Whoa, haha, <laughs> like threading the needle. Okay. And to do the bealizer, we have to look up the recipe because I can never remember. I think you need a carpenter, actually. And I think you need the carpenter full of water. Bealizer. There we go. Uh, yeah, you do need a carpenter. You do need a carpenter full of water. So this is all important stuff. We need tin and glass panes and glowstone, uh, redstone and a diamond, which we have tin, tin, a diamond, diamond, uh, glass panes, glass panes. Are you here? You're here. Glass panes and something else. Redstone. How could I forget the redstone? Two pieces of redstone. Perfecto. Okay. So hopefully we used up all the seed oil 
in the carpenter because I don't want to have to build another carpenter. Not not at this point anyway. Yeah, I think we have. I think we've used them all up. Yes, I know you're missing resources. You're missing seed oil, which right now is kind of perfect. So put the diamond. Again, that's only the shadow. I didn't suddenly magically get another diamond. Uh, it just kind of it holds the image in place. Uh, and so you have to put the pieces in here, otherwise it can't make it can't make the the product. Uh, once we get the recipe correct, it should appear. One, two, three, four. It should tell me, hey, yeah, I know this recipe, and it's not. Why are you not? Tin, 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 tin. Okay, maybe it maybe it just wants the water. Maybe it's saying we can't do anything without the water, but luckily there is water over here. I have come over to this pool many times and taken the water despite the dangers because uh, this being the only forested area this is the only place really where the mobs can spawn so they just spawn like crazy but not a problem okay I think it required two buckets of water why isn't this filling in and that has a very interesting hat I think he's got the floaty hat but we're gonna leave him alone I'm not gonna worry about the mobs nothing is loading in here I have been playing around in this area whoop, for at least an hour if not two it should all be loaded by now. Okay. Dee, 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 dee. Flying over here. Okay. Uh, not the centrifuge. We want the carpenter. One bucket of water. Take the water. Why you know take the water? Oh, it still has seed oil in it. Okay. Um, Let's see. Can I make a stick? Will it get you a stick? Still says seed oil. Get no seed oil. Get rid of the seed oil. Okay, well, let's do this. We're going to actually, we're just going to break it. We're going to take all of this. If we break it, we lose all our stuff. But that is fine. That's actually what we want. Uh, except, where are you? I want this. Give me that. Not that. Not that. Not that. Stop it. Okay, there we go. Da -da -da. Place that. And then we should be able to do this again with the water. Like I said, we should lose place. We sh yeah, empty. Okay, that's what it was. It just had a little bit of seed oil left, and it wasn't recognizing the recipe. So we empty it out, take the water. This should hopefully get rid of the water so we can... I don't know why I'm saying water funny. I guess it's just fun. Water. Okay, there we go. Excellent. It should run. I believe it's running. Are you running? Do you need more water? What do you need? What can I help you with? Oh, you, psh, we turned off the energy. There we go. That's what you needed. All right. Are you going to make it now? Fantastic. It's going. Did you know a machine set to private will disallow any interaction with tubes or pipes? Good. So if I set it to private and Justar comes along and tries to set up a pipe to pipe stuff in or out, he can't. Mwahaha. Actually, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. I don't know why you'd want to do that. I don't understand the point. Let's put these planks up just for now. Uh, that's almost full. Okay, and uh, let's get rid of these. Apparently, we need to figure out something to do with all of these logs. We'll make a bunch of apiaries, but you really don't need to make that many apiaries. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look real quick while that's running and see if maybe the oblivion bees will be happy in the forest here. Da -da. Okay, we can at least take a look at the environment. What is the environment like here? Normal and normal. That's excellent. I actually, most of the bees will require normal and normal. They don't require anything too fancy. You do get into different branches that do require heat or cold or something like that dry versus moist now for the most part you can get away with a normal and a normal you still not done you're still not done come on keep a working thank you okay so for the bealizer to work you simply hold it in your hand and right click and ta-da you have the bealizer with all kinds of information available the only way you can actually analyze the bee is you have to pacify it with a drop of honey so you place your honey here you can keep a stack in if you put in a stack and then you close your screen and then you open it again the honey's still there so it's a good way just to keep a stack in there then you simply drop the bee in the question mark it uses up the drop of honey but it gives you all of this information about the bee itself so this is actually very interesting and very good to know 
Uh, I, I okay. So let me let me go through it real quick and just kind of see. Yes, this is this is very interesting. Okay. Alrighty, so let me go through the, some of the information that's available with the bees. Uh, the first part, of course, you get the species. You will get, in this case, there's a queen, so you get um, what the bees before it were. This is essentially the parents, I think. No, no, I forget. This is the active trait versus the inactive trait, which it gets from the parents. So at this point in time, these should match pretty much exactly because this is essentially an origin bee. This is a bee from the wild. They should be pretty much the same across the across the board unless that changed. Once you start cross, bead, cross breeding, the active and the inactive becomes much more important and plays a bigger part and you will see differences and you can breed certain features in and out of your bees if you're kind of careful and a lot lucky. So. You'll see here we have the lifespan of the bee is shorter, meaning it doesn't live as long as a lot of other bees. It's not the shortest, but it is the shorter. It, uh, basically, there's six different levels from what I understand. Uh, shortest, shorter, normal, longer, and longest. Uh, speed, same thing in terms of levels. This is the slowest worker, meaning you will get fewer combs and fewer products from this bee unless you breed it to produce faster. Uh, but this bee has the lowest level of produce. It's going to take a long time to get anything out of it. Uh, pollination is slowest. This is in terms of setting up the trees. When you want to start breeding the trees, pollination means that it's going to take this bee the longest amount of time to crossbreed the trees uh, or to pollinate one tree versus the other. So you'll have two different trees sitting there and they'll be sitting there the longest amount of time just waiting for the bee to kind of get busy with it. Uh, so basically this bee has a short life and is very lazy, but that's all right. Okay, flowers is kind of a misnomer right here because this is basically what this bee needs to be happy and to produce anything at all. This bee is not going to work at all if you don't have whatever this is here. Uh, it's just going to say, no, I'm not going to do it, not going to do it. Uh, so if it says flowers, they need flowers nearby in order to be happy and do their thing. If it says, uh, in terms of the rocky bees, it will say, of course, rock. Because uh, they need rocks nearby, very easy. In this case, it says end. It needs end stone, which I kind of figured because when I broke the hives in the quarry, it was surrounded by end stone. And so that was kind of an indication to me that it needs end stone in order to produce. So though it says flowers... It, it, it's really in stone. So <clears throat> it's kind of a misnomer, like I said. Fertility. Uh, fertility refers to how many drones and you can get from each of these bees. Once this queen's lifespan is gone and she dies, she'll leave behind drones and one princess. Always one princess. Uh, this will tell you how many drones she leaves behind. In this case, it's four. She leaves behind four drones and one princess. So there will be five bees at the end of this. Area of effect meaning, uh, oops, ooh, don't come back here. Don't want to lose you. The area of effect basically means how how far away from the hive or from the apiary will be affected, and that's really in terms of side effects to you and if you're trying to breed the trees. So if she has, you're going to be noisy and annoy me. I'm going to go up here. Excuse moi. Okay, so she has a 9 by 6 by 9, meaning, um, I believe I believe the 6 is referring to the height. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but at the very least, I have to be 9 blocks away to not have any effect. So if I plant a tree here, I'm trying to cross, hey, I am trying to conduct a conversation here. Okay, thank you. Uh, so if I plant a tree here and a tree here, and I want them to breed, uh, or cross-breed, cross-pollinate, I guess I should say, not breed, but cross-pollinate, the bees aren't going to do anything because it's too far away. The bees can't reach it. I have to put it within that 9x9 nine nine range. So like right here would be fine. Uh, probably right here might be kind of pushing it without me counting. But de back here, definitely, then nothing would happen. You can have them plant, and you can have them sit here until kingdom come. Ain't nothing going to happen to those trees. Uh, same thing if there is a bad side effect with the bees. Um, if I'm far enough away, I won't feel that side effect, get too close, and I will feel the side effect, which actually brings us to our next feature, which is the effect. In this case, this bee does have an effect, and it is a negative effect. Uh, I know from experience, this is essentially aggressive behavior, meaning this bee will kill me. 
uh, will try very, very hard to kill me, depending on how aggressive it is. I know there's one type of, uh, of uh, negative that actually kills you within like seconds. I don't, I don't think the aggress is it, but it is. It's it's nasty. It will kill you if you stay too close without protection. Uh, the way to get protection, of course, is to do the apiarist clothing. Which is why I like the jungle bees, because the only way to get to this clothing, this apiarius stuff, is to make this woven silk, which requires silk wisp, which requires a silky propolis, which you can only get at least at the start from the jungle bees. Uh, tropical bees, I don't remember what they're called, but that's, that's why I like to get jungle bees right away, is because these bees, these oblivion bees, once I get them going, I'm not going to be able to go near this hive without taking a lot of damage. Uh, and it could cause issues. If I'm not careful, it could kill me very easily. And so that's just something to keep in mind. So that's what that is. Okay, so that's the effect. And then down here, this is what I was essentially looking for. This tells me what kind of climate and humidity the bee needs to do its thing. In this case, it needs a cold and normal humid area. So this forest over here, magical forest, the normal normal, thank you, is actually not going to work. It's not going to like it. It's going to say, no, this is too hot. And I, don't, I don't want none of this. So we have to find ourselves a cold normal biome, which I believe normal taiga will suffice. I actually think uh, near our cherry blossom base actually should work because uh, there is that that little bit of snow area over there and it's kind of in the foresty so I'm, I'm betting that that works just fine so we're probably gonna have to take these back to our place and actually have them going there so we do in fact get to have something at the cherry blossom base and get it working which is nice but I do want to make sure that I take care of that aggress you can breed that out of them eventually um, you can also get once you get their DNA going so and then just to kind of go over, because this this is gonna this is already gonna be a little bit of a longer episode, and I don't want to bore you because I just feel like I'm I'm doing nothing but chattering at a screen that's not moving, and I just hit my microphone, so I apologize. Um, trying to get more comfortable. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, that's the climate cold. The temperature tolerance is two degrees colder or two degrees warmer, I guess would be. It, when there's a lot of temperature tolerance available, the bee can tolerate other temperatures doesn't really like it. Um, dang it, I keep doing that. So theoretically, if it can tolerate two degrees warmer, it should actually be okay in this area. So let's let's actually just test this theory and find out. I never really played too much with temperature tolerance. I just kind of figured out what the bee wanted and then just kind of let it go. Oh yeah, it works. <laughs> That's what that, did you see me take damage? That was the bee. That was the bee doing its thing. So we know it works. Let's actually take it out. Goodness, okay. Yeah, that's going to be... Look at that. Hit me three times and I'm already half health. I'm going to let myself heal up before... I wanted to... That was my only analyzed bee. I've only got the one... The one bee that's analyzed. I only had the one honey drop, so I can't do this one. So let's actually... Let's actually put those up and let those run while we talk. No, not yet, because I want to do something else. Um, sorry. Can't make up my mind. Okay, so here we have diurnal, nocturnal, flyer, and cave. Just a quick lowdown. Diurnal means they run during the day. That's a yes. It's a yes or a no. So yes, it runs during the day. Nocturnal, of course, does it run during the night. Most bees do not. In this case, this bee does. Flyer means if it's raining, will they work? Uh, do they do they do their thing in the rain? In this case, no. So when it's raining, they're not producing anything. They're just kind of hiding in their hive and not doing anything. Um, can they work in the cave? The, again, this is a bit of a misnomer. The beehives, dang it. And you are going to cause me problems. I know it. Uh, the beehives are going to uh, have to be able to see the sky. Uh, air air blocks such as glass I think is okay and leaves are okay I could be wrong don't quote me on that if you're having issues with your bees and there's anything at all above the apiary that's probably what the problem is in this case I think I've got a direct line to the sky so we can't really tell yeah it's just better to give it a direct line to the sky <coughs> and that's what cave means it means can the apiary see the sky essentially it, is the sky visible from the apiary and then, again, I'm trying to run through pretty quick. You can read all of this stuff online. 
Uh, this will tell you what it produces. In this case, it's those combs, the mysterious combs, or the, I don't forget what they're called, but you saw them. Uh, possible mutations. This means this bee can turn into, or can be the parent of, three other different types of species. Don't know what they are yet. That's why they're all circles. We haven't started breeding them with anything, so we don't know. Uh, and this is just a classification uh, and tells you a little bit more about the bee and the order and all that fun stuff. I don't particularly keep track of all of this, but if you're interested in all of that, that's, that's what's there for you. It's the Latin of it. And then before we put these bees and get them going and let them do their thing, um, we are actually going to make something. What was I going to make? I was going to make something. Oh, yes, right. I'll show you. In order to get the bees to produce something a little bit more than what they have already, we need to make frames. The frames go in the apiaries, and it causes the bees to produce more. It's kind of like, you know, they can make more honeycombs if there's something to put the honeycombs on, if that makes any sense. Um, and there are different levels of frames uh, which cr affect the various products, possible products, differently. Don't know if I'm explaining this very well, but if you have a frame, I'm avoiding trying to use <laughs> the R, stupid R button. Okay, here's a frame, a chocolate frame, uh, restraint frame, soul frame, healing frame, Nova frame, untreated frame, and pregnant frame. So you get the idea. There's different kinds of frames that do different things. The three I'm going to focus on right now is the untreated frame, the impregnated frame, and the proven frame. Untreated per frame is, you saw what I made just now. Did I hit R anyway? I did. I totally hit R anyway. Dang it. <clears throat> okay, I guess not that big of a deal. Uh, but you saw me make the frame. It's just string surrounded by a stick. If I use or the impregnated stick, if I used regular sticks, I get an untreated frame. You do increase the amount of product it the frame can produce. Um, then, but it's not nearly as much. The next level up is the proven or the impregnated frame. You can get more stuff with the impregnated frame than you can with the untreated. And then, of course, the level above that is the proven, which you can't actually craft. You have to find, or you have to trade with one of the bee villagers to get. Uh, those are the only ways to get the the proven frames. Is you find them in a dungeon or an apiary at a um, or in an apiary at the what's call it at the Let's get that. At a village, or you trade a villager for it. Oh, I can't pick that up because I'm full. Okay. So, to get the bees going, apparently they can tolerate the normal temperatures. They prefer cold, but they can tolerate, because uh, that's what the two, the tolerance of two was. Uh, right here. The tolerance of two means it can go up two degrees. That's what that two is there for. If it had like this normal with the zero and then little arrows, that means it has to be cold. It won't work in any other conditions. In this case, the bee does work in other conditions. Uh, so we just want to put in the frames to get a higher chance of getting the combs, which is what we want. Uh, this is the whole purpose of what we're doing this for. So we want the higher chance. Let me break this. Okay. Be not good photo creeper to appear. I'm trying to put down the end stone. We have to give it the stuff it needs to fertilize the area and, and do its thing, which happens to be endstone, so endstone does need to be nearby. I forget how close. I usually put it in within you know, a block or two. Um, and then put in the frames here. And then we get this bee here. Let's get these guys going. And they'll do their thing. You'll see the drone essentially gets absorbed by the princess, and the princess becomes the queen, and then she starts killing me. <laughs> okay. Let's be really quick about this. Put that in. Okay, you can see the area of effect going in. I was far enough away from the other one to not be activated. Um, so you can see the area of effect kind of playing. See how close I can get. Oh, there we go. And that startled me. <laughs> yeah, so these, these are aggressive bees. They will, they will kill you. The, these are the type that within not super, not super, super quick. It's not instantaneous. You have enough time to run, but you better run. So yeah, so that is the basic rundown of bees, the very beginning of them. We're going to let them do their thing here, mostly because this is where I'm going to be doing a lot of my work just for right now, uh, and I want them kind of running in the background. Then we will go back to the cherry blossom base, and I'll get my jungle bees going, hopefully, uh, so we can get some apiarist outfit going, so the apiarist uniform, and we hopefully do not die from those stupid oblivion bees. 
and hopefully we can get them automated too. Once they're automated, again, you need the comb for that. Uh, you need a lot of the bee products early in the beginning to make a lot of the bee related paraphernalia. Uh, so, but once we get the automated, we don't have to worry about it as much. We can have all the stuff piped directly to us and have the bees, you know, get cycled automatically. It's it's quite it's quite magical actually. I quite I quite love it. I enjoy it a lot. Oh, hello. We need a new hat. Let's do the <laughs> let's do the class hat because why not? <laughs> So, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I will talk to you later. Bye.